Okay, the first thing to do is get the logs that you already have prepared moved into position to the sawmill. When you're doing this, you will need to make sure that the narrow end of the log is going to be facing the cutting end of the saw blade, not the other way around. Tools that you'll need for this job are a Sharpie marker type pen or pencil, a set square, a tape measure is very important, uh, you'll need water replenishment for your uh, what if your blade is being water cooled like this one is and you'll also need uh, clean fuel you don't want to use ethanol no ethanol fuel for this otherwise you'll possibly muck up your carburetor okay now with your log mounted onto the actual sawmill you'll want to basically do a little bit of mathematics which is to raise that narrow thin end of the log so it's actually balanced to the actual thick end of the log, which is on the other side. Now to do this, what you'll need to do is you do, need to do a quick measurement. And you'll need to measure the thin end compared with the thick end. The difference between the two, you halve, and that measurement is what you want to raise up the thin end with. So if it's like one inch between difference, if there's one inch difference between the thin end and the thick end, or the tapered end and the, and the bigger end. Basically, you've got, your th you've got the end that the thing that the tree grows out of the ground, right? That's always going to be thicker in most cases than the further up the tree you go. So basically, the um, thinner end, I always mean, is the end that's going to be thinner than the thicker trunk stump end, just for the sake of argument, if anyone's wondering what I mean by thin and thick end. So anyway... You find your measurements, so with a one inch difference between the thin and the thick end, you, you, you halve it and you get half an inch. With that half inch, you want to raise up the actual thin end half an inch. And you do it, if it's, if it's two inches, it'll be like half of two inches is one inch, so you want to raise it up one inch on the thin end. And with this calculation, you'll be able to get a, a basically an even cut along the log without using too much of the, uh, of the log up when you're cutting. You may find it helpful to draw a diagram on the actual uh, thin end diameter that you've measured. Um, you can find the middle of the diameter by measuring half and half and basically draw a profile of the actual uh, of what you want to cut. You might want to get more than one, one beam or one board out of it so you might want to do multiple drawings and diagrams of this. When you go to make your actual first cut it can be a good idea to make a very very gentle cut and then pull the saw blade back and then make a, a measurement to confirm what your cuts are actually going to be you don't have to do this if you're uh, confident and experienced but if you're just getting started with the sawmill it can be a good idea to do this just to get a feel and feel for what it's going to do because remember you always lose an eighth maybe even two eighths of an inch of what you're cutting due to the saw blade if it's one thing that's easy to forget using a sawmill, it's forgetting to dog down the log that you're cutting. In the case of some of the large logs that are very heavy, you can get away without dogging it, but it's always a good idea to dog it down using the tool provided. And you need to use experience and um, practice to get good at dogging it down because the, sometimes it's not a very easy apparatus to use unless you're uh, consistently working with it and in some cases you may have to use a piece of battening to actually stabilize the actual clamp effect of it so this is just something to always keep in mind when you're actually using the sawmill if you don't have it dogged down the worst case scenario is all your measurements are going to be thrown and you're going to end up with an uneven beam a very uneven beam one of your final checks you should be doing before you go to make a cut using the sawmill is you want to make sure the handle for the dogging apparatus is always downwards. Failing to do this and forgetting is probably one of the number one ways you destroy your saw blade while you're cutting. And although you might think it's, oh, you'd be stupid to do that, you'd be surprised if, you get, if you're cutting again and again and again, you're getting overconfident, you're getting fatigued, it can all build up together and 
and, and then all of a sudden you're going along, you're not looking what you're doing, you're just pushing and whistling and you hit the bloody dog handle which is up. I haven't quite done that, I've been lucky. Uh, one time I did do it, I just caught the plastic handle and so the blade wasn't what was spared. But um, you hit any metal with the metal, it's over. So always remember to keep the handle down on the dogging tool. Thank you.